Hello and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today is episode 16 and today we're going to be chatting about fat intake on a keto program. Hi Eric. Good, how are you Glenn? Very, very good, thank you. So this is quite a, a controversial topic I suppose. I mean um, with the, so much confusion going out there all over the place on this particular topic, I thought it would be a great idea that um, you and I could possibly set the, the record straight. So if we could jump straight in, um, before we even jump straight in, just one of the questions I think is important to understand is that fat has obviously been vilified for the last couple of decades. And um, before we start on to how much fat you should have, why do you think fat has been vilified over the last couple of decades? Sure. So, well, if there was one thing that doctors and dietitians and even the general public learned about food, it was that eating fat was harmful or risky or, or you know, something you didn't want to do. It caused heart disease. And um, it took me some time to come to the realization that eating fat was not harmful. Uh, a couple uh, pivotal books that I read uh, Gary Taubes, an investigative journalist, spent five years in, a, in an apartment basically writing the book Good Calories, Bad Calories. And while it's still maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 years out there, it's still an important book to read if you have any question about how this happened. And it was that weak science got pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, and that created the whole dietary fat blood cholesterol, heart disease connection, which really isn't a thing. <laughs> I mean, so at the same time, the science was re-examining whether dietary fat, when you examined all of the different studies in, th in a type of study called a meta-analysis, <clears throat> there really wasn't a strong relationship between the fat and the food and human health or harm to humans. So. Uh, putting that together, they, there were uh, doctors, organizations, researchers who kind of cherry-picked data, meaning you only cite the studies that support your position. And I think that's the main reason why scientists sort of got, led doctors, uh, got misled down a path where we thought it was great science when it, it really wasn't. Do you feel that the tide is turning? Do you feel that people are, are more, you know, uh, medical specialists and medical doctors, do you think that they are uh, starting to understand that maybe this, they were, uh, what they thought was not entirely true? Yeah, I, I, I do. I think the tide is turning and that uh, many doctors now and dietitians are open to the idea of higher fat diets. I mean, I can remember when I would stutter the high fat, 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 high fat, fat, because I, you know, it, it was, it seemed immoral or, or, you know, it's like a religious taboo. You couldn't study high fat diets for so long. Of course, we've been studying for about 20 years now uh, and other places have studied. Um, so what we were doing was studying high fat diets, giving people or letting people eat fat and finding improvements in diabetes, obesity, hypertension, all of these things that people were trying to fix with medications. And so that's really kind of my story. I found through a two, two of my patients, they did the high fat diet and everything was getting better. And so we wrapped up the research around that kind of approach. And now, you know, after 20 years of examination, the keto diet or low carb diets look even better than before. So um, yeah, I think the tide's turning, although the general culture uh, you know, um, I'm in a clinic, you know, every week and um, I still hear people worried about it, you know, so it takes a long time to percolate through, <clears throat> Even although Time Magazine had a had butter on the cover and all those things are helpful. Uh, there's still a long way to go in understanding that eating fat is fine. So now comes the, you know, more of the tricky part because a lot of folks that um, have read information out there or uh, watched uh, videos and podcasts and webinars, um, they're still shooting for a, for a particular macronutrient breakdown. And they're trying to achieve either 70, 75% of their, their, their calorie intake of fat. And um, 
I don't think that is necessarily true or right. So um, could you talk to that a little bit? Sure, and I, and I can explain where that comes from. Uh, the ketogenic diet for epilepsy is a rather um, small niche of a dietary treatment for children who are affected by epilepsy. And in some of these children, it fixes it overnight. It's, it's miraculous. Um, and those folks have to be very strict about avoiding carbohydrates and having a certain protein fat ratio at every meal to stay in ketosis. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about on a, a keto diet for treating metabolic problems. You don't have to be that strict. So I even see uh, in the news today, uh, recently, an uh, expert being asked about the keto diet, and they toggle back to the ketogenic diet for epilepsy. And, and there are all these apps that, that tell you you have to be in this range and all that with the kind of mistaken idea that that we're talking about the ketogenic diet for epilepsy, which we're not. So there's a whole other body of knowledge and studies and, and uh, dozens of papers looking at a less formal, it's more like an ad lib, meaning you can eat real foods, you don't have to be strict about the macros, and it works really well to treat all of these different metabolic chronic conditions that we see today. That's where the confusion comes from. The macro about you must be in ketosis and the ketogenic diet for epilepsy is very strict, and but that's not what we're talking about. So um, I know that um, on the Adaptulab diet, um, fat, for example, is not restricted, but um, but it actually it's not restricted because you don't want people counting their calories. But the fact is, you don't want people overdoing the fat either. Right. Well, so when you really deep dive into our approach, the high calorie foods, high fat foods have a limit on them. Actually, that so like a uh, cream or oils, uh, you wouldn't want someone to uh, consume, you know, uh, bottles of olive oil, not that anyone did, would, although one person was having so much coconut oil and, and other things, butter in the coffee, that this person couldn't achieve weight loss because of all of the calories in there. So the um, real foods that contain protein first and some fat, which have no carbs, really have no limit. Uh, and in the common usage, most people don't overconsume the oils and things like that. It, it's a very rare thing, but you know, I see the rare things. <laughs> so people come to me when, when the, the simple approach doesn't work. So I've learned how to troubleshoot those sorts of things. And yeah, we don't say to, um, to worry about the fat that comes with the real food that you're eating. Uh, there's, there's not concern about that being unhealthy. And so um, would you, would, does that mean that you have a preference to the type of fat? So for example, fats that are naturally found in animal products. Um, so for example, you're eating a steak and it's got fat on, that, that naturally is found inside the steak. You've got no problem with that. Um, but you're saying the extra calories, people should be cautious about consuming, over consuming these calories. Yeah, so the type of fat um, gets, um, a lot of people get tripped up on that too quickly. Uh, I, I, you may be surprised that I, you know, I don't really care at first what type of fat you're having or what type of oil. And I think it's a, a lesser important thing um, to worry about at first. And, and my, my um, evidence for that is I have people who eat uh, processed foods, fast foods, um, uh, oils that would you know, you look at keto today, strict keto, you can't have certain oils. Uh, no, I have people who eat those things and, and, and they actually achieve improvements in their metabolic health. So uh, I, um, the, the commonality of, of the bad oils is processed foods, like uh, uh, things you'll find in packages in the middle of the aisles. Uh, these are all forbidden. I mean, or you're not supposed to have these on any kind of program, you know, the, the chips and the, the uh, um, snack foods like that. And that's where a lot of the, the bad, bad, quote, bad oils in the keto world are. Uh, and you'll be reducing those in a great way just by not eating those foods that contain carbohydrates and the bad oils at the same time. So, uh, sorry, repeat that? Quote, 
bad oils. Oh, I see. Okay. Me, so, so, uh, right. Let me just go on this just one, uh, a moment because at a recent keto conference, I was just looking at one of the lectures and and it, it seemed to uh, you know ask the question: Are seed oils the the bane of existence, and the, is this is what causes all of the, so the the worry about vegetable and seed oils, you have to just step back a moment. <laughs> um, diabetes and, and obesity and gout, these things existed before there were seed oils and vegetable oils. Those are really kind of a, a, a new phenomenon. So you can't just say that these are the cause of all those things, the only cause, because these problems existed before the current processed food industry took these oils and processed them, uh, or seeds and, and vegetables. And the other thing is the experience that I have in teaching people in the real world, they consume the salad dressing that has the vegetable oil. They go to places that don't have the fanciest um, food and they still have results. So that's, that's one of the things we want to bring to the, the teaching is that we want to give you the, the most important messages and how to work in the real world consuming foods that are readily available. And I think the worry about vegetable and seed oils is, is frankly over, oversold. Uh, it, it, it's not the most important thing to worry about. Um, uh, something else I wanted to, to ask you, um, or I wanted to mention, maybe you can just elaborate on it, is um, we speak about, we, right now, up until this point, we've been speaking about the fat that you can consume. But there's another fat, and that's the fat that we have on board. And a keto diet or a low-carb diet allows you to tap into that body fat stores to use as energy. And people, you know, it's, it's such an important, it was such an aha moment when, when I understood this. Um, because as a car burner, you've only got a limited amount of glycogen in your, in your, in your muscles that you can use. And once you're out of it, you're out of fuel. Um, but as a fat burner, you, you just default to using your body fat. So your body actually never, ever starts. But I'm sure you can elaborate there. Yes, and you know, I think the athletic world started using the language of running on fat, running on fat for fuel and being a fat burner. And you know, we borrowed that in, in our educational uh, as well because you burn what you eat. So if you're trying to get rid of the, if you're trying to burn the fat off your body and you eat sugar, you're gonna burn the sugar or eat or drink. So when you don't eat or drink the sugar, your body isn't burning the sugar anymore and it turns into the fat burning machine that you wanna be when you're trying to lose your body fat. And another point about that is your ketones come from your body fat. You don't have to consume ketones in order to have ketones in the blood or you know, to be keto. And there's a lot of distraction about that today. You know, buy my keto this, my keto that. You actually get into ketosis without consuming ketones. And, and the other thing about the fat on the body is if you're trying to burn the fat off your body, you don't want to be drinking and eating copious amounts of fat or oils, which are really uh, the same thing metabolically as, um, in terms of calories. So that, that's another big distinction, um, and, and it simplifies things. You don't have to worry about having the keto drinks and the, uh, all those things, which uh, you know, currently they're, they're a big distraction. So... Um... I'm hoping that that um, a lot of the, the topics that we've, you know, the questions that we've gone over today has been helpful to a lot of the people. Um, but I've got some questions here, and I've got the first one from Rebecca, and she says, um, "Can fat, fat can fat intake cause my ketones to go up?" Well, they can, and depending on the type of fat or oil you consume, you can change, uh, increase the ketone levels. Uh, but that's not the goal unless you're doing a ketogenic diet for epilepsy or some other kind of niche thing. The goal for, for me is to have you have improvements in your health. And it's not yet shown that you have to have a certain ketone level. Uh, uh, occasionally, occasionally, I'll have people tell me that their ketones, so you can measure your blood ketones, your urine and your breath. And occasionally there's some conditions like um, 
uh, migraines that are really ref migraine headaches are refractory to all these different things. I've had people tell me that their ketone level makes them feel better or worse. And but until there are studies, or I'll kind of if there if I hear this ten times, five to ten times, I, I start well from patients who aren't you know selling me products. <laughs> um, I'll start think well maybe this is uh, really a, a real signal. And then what I try to do is get that information into the medical literature with case studies and then try to get some research wrapped around it so that we know that it's something that applies more to that, more to everyone than just that individual. And that's a big concern about the internet as a teaching resource is if you follow, you know, Mr. Smith and he did this and had great results, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And so that's where our teaching incorporates the uh, approach that works for a wide variety of people uh, it's because we've been working on this for 15, 20 years now in the research and clinical setting. Uh, but uh, I, yes, you can change the ketone levels, but I'm not sure that's really necessary yet. We don't know that. I got a question from Jeff and he asks, will eating saturated fat cause my triglycerides to go? Well, that's an interesting question. You, you might think that because the triglycerides are really fat going around in the bloodstream, but they're on a particle that, uh, called VLDL. Or, uh, anyway, the, the detail is they're, they're on a particle that actually comes from the liver and it's carbohydrates the sugars that are turned into the fats that get on this particle. So triglycerides really don't come from saturated fat. They come from carbohydrates. And the effect of, uh, I, I see this in the clinical setting, there'll be doctors, even liver specialists who say, oh, fatty liver, you need to eat less fat. Well, <laughs> no, the, you need to less, eat less carbs, less sugar, because it's the sugar that's turned to fat causing fatty liver, and then the fat gets put on the particles and are measured as triglyceride in the blood. We okay, put that all together in a week's time, or maybe give it two weeks, you can see a dramatic reduction in the blood triglyceride. If you go to your doctor, they, they check it, and then two weeks later after a keto low-carb diet, the triglycerides will on average go down 50%. And uh, there's some even dramatic results of triglycerides in the thousands, which is like 10 times as high as you want it, that plummet and come down almost to the normal range in a short period of time. So uh, no, so it might seem like saturated fat turns to fat in the blood triglyceride, but it doesn't. Right. And it's okay to eat saturated fat if that was the, <laughs> the other implication there. I guess this is what's been, um, this is what was thought over the decades when we spoke about when we opened up in the beginning, why people just assumed that eating fat caused fat in the blood and fat in the arteries and cholesterol, et cetera, et cetera. So last question I have is from Doris, Doris, and she asks, is there a minimum amount of fat that she needs to eat? Well, uh, there is. Uh, this gets to the bigger question of, um, what is a nutrient that a human must consume? That's called an essential nutrient, meaning your body can't make the nutrient, you have to eat it. It turns out there's no essential carbohydrate, meaning humans don't have to eat carbs, sugars, and starches. Our body can make all of those things by itself from other things that you eat. And there are essential amino acids or, or proteins, essential proteins, and there are essential fatty acids. Fortunately, if you eat real foods uh, and uh, don't do some bizarre formulation of a, of a diet, you're going to get all of the essential fatty acids you need from the meat, poultry, fish and shellfish and eggs that are recommended on a well-formulated ketogenic diet. So I don't worry about you getting enough fat to uh, get so you won't get an essential fatty acid deficiency. Now, the other question though is, do you have to have people come to me thinking they need X grams of fat because the app tells them, or, the, the, or they need, they're not eating enough calories, they're not eating enough protein? No, in our teaching, we, we don't recommend certain levels of fat. Again, that comes from the 
keto approaches for epilepsy treatment or when you're really trying to achieve a certain ketone level, which is not needed to treat metabolic problems with a keto diet. Does, does, does fat have any effect on the insulin at all? No. No effect and on insulin whatsoever? No. Okay. And, and that, that's an important point. The, the approach we teach, because it doesn't raise the blood glucose level much, it won't raise the blood insulin level much because insulin is increased as a function of carbohydrate first. Uh, carbohydrates raise the insulin most. Protein raises insulin a little bit, but not nearly as much as carbohydrates, which makes me always think that the, the real reason insulin is, go, is going around is actually to help protein in the cells. So actually insulin does a lot more than lower the blood glucose. Wow. Uh, it's needed for other things. Um, you know, I just wanted to, to say that um, the idea of eating fat and the fat in the blood, fat in the arteries is, is as logical as, you know, looking at the sun in the morning on the sunrise coming over and, then, and saying, well, look, the sun goes around the earth. Mm. Right. Well, wait a sec. Right. <laughs> so as children, we're, we're shown models of the earth going around the sun. And, you know, if you, uh, but when you drill down to the science, it was incredible that they figured out by looking at the planets in the sky that the earth was going around the sun. Because when you just look, it really looks like the sun's going around the earth. Yeah. Huh. I think we've unpacked a, a, a fortune of good um, uh, bits of information here. And we're hoping that these are going to you know, help a lot of people to watch these videos. Uh, thank you so much, Eric. I really appreciate it. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, um, you can always find us on our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts under the name of Adapt Your Life. Um, if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, please don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted every time we uh, put out a new video, which is once a week um, on a Wednesday, I believe it is. And if you enjoyed this video as well, please would you like and share it. It would mean the absolute world to us. So that is us for today. That's uh, Eric and Glenn signing off on another episode of Conversations on, uh, of Dr. Westman. Um, and we will be catching you next week for the next one. Eric, thank you so, so much. Thank you, Glenn.